everybody, I'm Steve and I'm from Scram Speed and uh, we're going to talk about a subject today that can set any Facebook group on fire and it has generated a zillion memes, some of them pretty funny, and that is, you know, basically the battle of CARD versus LS. I have a lot of opinions about that because I really see both sides of it uh, and I'd like to clear up a lot of the misinformation and a lot of the bad arguments that people make against doing it. I've got a carbureted LS car, you know, we do a ton of EFI here at the shop, you know, and I get asked about that. Why on earth do you have a carburetor on your LS when you have a dyno, you've got really great tuners here, you've got all the hardware, everything you need to easily put EFI on the car? And the answer I give a lot of times is, well, I tune carburetors here, so I have to stay in practice. Um, and really probably what I'm trying to do there is avoid getting into one of these debates, right? So uh, I want to talk about some of the issues that people bring up in those debates. And the first one is um, that it's a step backwards in technology, right? That you're putting outdated technology on there. And, you know, outdated is a term that doesn't really apply because they still work perfectly well, right? And then as far as technology for technology's sake goes, um, and not to date myself too much, but uh, in the 70s, Led Zeppelin wrote this song called Stairway to Heaven, which is a really great song. Then in the 80s, with newer technology and improved editing and computer, synth computer synthesizers and all kinds of stuff, Starship made this song, We Built This City on Rock and Roll, which is the worst rock and roll song ever made. And if you don't believe me, it's on YouTube. Check it out. Maybe I'll put up a link. Uh, so I don't really buy that argument. The other argument is that the engine was fuel injected to start with. And of course the answer to that is the engine doesn't know whether it's fuel injected or not. Um, maybe your car was already carbureted, you know, so you can just drop the LS in there, put a box and an intake manifold on it, use your existing carburetor, and you're in great shape. Another thing is people say, well, EFI is better, right? And of course, it depends. Is EFI better at all kinds of weather? If you're putting a driver that's gonna have to go up and down mountains and you're gonna drive all over the country in it, yeah, yeah, it's better. You're gonna, you're gonna be able to do things just automatically that you'd have to change settings on the carburetor to do. Absolutely. Are you making a weekend cruiser or just a drag car or what have you? then I argue, no, it's not better. And I don't know why car guys get so tied up in what's better anyway. I mean, you're making a car, you're building a combination because you like to do that, right? So isn't what's important whether you like it, you know? I mean, I like old Mopars. I can argue that they're not better than old Chevys and Fords, for sure, but I like them. So that's good enough for me. There's also the argument of price. Price is so subjective to the initial, to whatever you're working with to start with, right? Yeah, you get you usually get an EFI harness and a computer to with your engine, which is great if you know how to use HP tuners. Uh, but maybe you've already got a carburetor car. Maybe you've already got a carburetor. You can take the carburetor off your small block Chevy or whatever and put it on an LS, no problem. Uh, so I, that argument is so dependent on what you are starting with, it's really irrelevant. The last reason is really the one that has the most merit, and that is that there are lots of really crappy running carbureted cars out there uh, running around, and they've all seen them, and they all pop through the carburetor, and they stall and die, and all that stuff. Yeah, but don't worry, we're gonna do a video where I'm gonna show you everything you need so you're not that guy. So now, it's not fashionable, so if that matters to you, then yeah, don't put a carburetor on there, but maybe you like not being fashionable. I mean, so I'm just gonna say, the LS is the best engine to put a carburetor on that's ever been. And the reason for it is because it completely divorces the ignition and the fueling system, right? All EFI is for and all carburetors are for is to maintain the air fuel ratios that you desire at given throttle conditions. Both can be made to work really well for that. However, Smokey Unix said, and this is very true, we found this in the shop, 90% of all carburetor problems are actually ignition problems. 
and that's that's definitely you know distributors. You don't have to do without a distributor for very long before you never want to go back. And the LS, you don't have to mess with that. You still get to use the coil packs. You still get to use the sensors. You can still have it. You know, have extra timing and cold start or whatever you want to do. You get a max sensor, so you can really tune your part throttle drivability. It's the best engine that's ever existed for putting a carburetor on. Period. And it's easy. It's really easy. You carb intake and box. Four wires to hook up the box. Um, and then you're just off and running. You don't even need a laptop to get the most horsepower out of it. You do need a laptop because the prepackaged timing curves won't get that for your engine. Not necessary, but recommended. As far as performance goes, this is where the car guys make some silly arguments. You can find all kinds of videos. Carburetors make more power than fuel injection. Uh, you know, the same combo and all that. And yeah, sure, you know, we've seen that here. You know, you get a really similar combination. You know, a carburetor will typically put out some more power on the dyno. You get a better dyno sheet. Um, but I'm just going to say that probably you'll never see that on a time slip with the state of tune your car is going to be in. Um, I don't believe I would see it on a time slip with my car, and I'm on the carb side on this argument. Uh, it's, you know, if you're Stevie fast, fine. It makes a big difference. If you're a regular guy doing an LS swap and you're going to just have a car, you're going to run at the track or whatever, it's not going to make any difference as far as performance goes. This is my car. This car has a stock, completely stock short block, 6.2 out of a 2010 Camaro like I got out of the junkyard. It has a VTR cam in it. It has a Victor Junior intake manifold and a quick fill 850 and nitrous, obviously. This car has been deep in the fives. This car doesn't run as hard quarter mile. It's been 9.0 at 150 in the quarter mile. So performance really isn't a concern to any reasonable standpoint for what anybody's gonna do. This car is not maxed out. I don't ever get time to work on it. We're working on other people's cars. Why wouldn't I put a carburetor on an LS? I definitely wouldn't put a carburetor on an LS if you were gonna go forced induction. For anybody watching this video, you're going to be way better off with the FI, especially if you're looking to run nines or better. You just the data you get from EFI and all that stuff. I know, I know, lots of people are running really fast with blow through carburetors, and that's true. And I'm not trying to take away anything from them or anything like that. I'm just saying, when people are asking me for a recommendation, I would say EFI is going to be better for a turbo blower, etc. The number one reason I like this as a solution is because I like it. Like I said, and that's the most important thing for me with my car. The very first car we ever had in the shop, before I had one with a Carb LS, the very first one was this S10 pickup truck, and it had a Carb LS on it, and just the second I started tuning on it, I was like, this is fantastic. I have to get me one of these. If that's what's important to you and you think you'd like it, I urge you to jump in the water spine. It's very, very easy and very fun and we're going to tell you everything you need to know. We're gonna make some videos, how to set up the box, you know, both installing the car and how the software works. We're gonna do some car tuning videos, that sort of thing, so stay tuned. We're giving away this 6014 box to one lucky subscriber, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and also like the video if this has been helpful. Be sure to hit the bell notification so you don't miss it when we do the giveaway and uh, YouTube likes that, so it's really good for us. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching.